so this is a slow damage playthrough. As you can see, I have to hit the enter key. Oh, that rhymed. I didn't intend to do that. But yeah, new year, new playthrough, new trauma, new. <laughs> Let's just get right into it. I've heard a lot about slow damage. I have X. This is disgusting. <laughs> Um, I have a lot of expectations, but very low expectations. I will say my expectations are lower than Dramatical Murder because I only think there's like two characters. Actually, no, it was just Noise and Dramatic Murder. So actually maybe, I don't know. I don't know what to expect other than the fact that I'm probably going to be grossed out perpetually throughout this. So let's just start. New canvas. Why, what is with this like ASMR, like nails on chalkboard, like, <laughs> I can't deal with this. You're welcome. Helpful explanation, the interrogation gameplay segments. You need this information because interrogation can be tricky. Sure can, you'll be able to skip the tutorial on some sequent playthroughs, got it. As you speak to your target, try to fill the euphoria gauge. Doing so will progress the story. The text, as you can see in your... Oh my god, there's a mini game. <laughs> Fuck! New Year's saying bullshit. The next text you see in your memo pad will serve as the hint to act accordingly to make progress in the interrogation. Talk to him and try to expose his secret. Depending on the flow of conversation and your target's body language, you may want to take things in a different direction. Your choices will determine. So, okay. So it just sounds like just making choices. Not hypnotized. <laughs> this is very pretty, by the way. Nitro Chiral. Let's talk about the hourglass and jagged. Da -da -da. Hourglass represents your target's euphoria level. And the hourglass of the line in the middle and the sand will start glowing. This means you've achieved full... Fill the hourglass to the line at the middle. Okay. As you approach full euphoria, the red line will flash, letting you know you're almost there. Oh, okay. Purpose, purple line at the bottom is the minimum baseline for euphoria. I mean, okay, I kind of see it. The sand should fall below this line. A bad end. Got it. It will result in a game over, so be careful. Fuck. <laughs> this is going to be a very interesting playthrough. Sure. I'm so fucked. <laughs> in other words, they're emotional wounds. Ooh. Relatable. As the wounds are ripped open, madness will increase. Oh, is there some sort of drug subplot in this? At full madness, the hourglass will start to crack like so. As the wound closes, madness will decrease. Oh, okay. So the jagged edges. Okay. Achieving full euphoria will complete the interrogation. Route branching only occurs during important story scenes, but the, inter the results of each interrogation will impact the... Oh, well, I guess I can't do the main Or is it... Ugh, grit, whatever. <laughs> Low madness will inflict a madness penalty. This is so complicated. A high madness will grant a, a madness bonus. What? This includes... Sure. Check your objective, move the cursor to the right hand edge of the screen. That way you won't forget. No. You're the vampire everyone's talking about, right? Ugh. No, I'm not a vampire. Positive and negative to disagree. During the interrogation, you can respond with negative or positive answers. Passive answers are negative while more assertive answers are positive. This decision will affect your target's euphoria and madness. Their status is displayed at the bottom of the screen, so choose carefully to raise their euphoria. As for raising their madness, why don't you give it a try? Negative. Negative. <laughs> Even though you crave blood? <laughs> Here's what you'll use inspiration gained by talking to people in the explanation exploration segments. We'll talk more about, sure. Using your, this is so, gives you a bigger boost compared to negative and positive answers. Additionally, inspiration has a few different patterns. 
two choice answers, sequential answers, even two choice answers that lead to sequential answers. Use your inspiration whenever you see something you want. This is going, <laughs> this is worse than fucking full service. Let's try it out. Bait him. You must be miserable. Uh. I love that this is in Japanese though. <laughs> Let's go resp Painter over black tells you that euphoria is not the goal this time. And the hourglass is black, madness is the goal. Rare occasions the goal may be to avoid full madness. You'll have to judge for yourself depending on the circumstances. Situations where euphoria is not the goal. Repainted white. They offer hints about the objective. Oh, he is a vampire. We've been new. <laughs> Kizuato. Kizuato. This man's deepest desire. Build before I gauge with a specifi specified number of turns. You can use the clues acquired in the story to rip open your target's secret scars. Pick the right clue and the wound will open, progressing the story. But be careful, the wrong answer will lower the euphoria gauge. If you haven't reached a full euphoria once, it's time to choose a clue. Game over. Oh, if you haven't reached full euphoria once, it's time to choose a clue. Game over. Fall below the euphoria line, that's game over. I'm so fucked. <laughs> use a clue to see if you can open this man's secret scar. Is this... <laughs> this is so much. Oh my god, where in the where the hell am I gonna be allowed to upload this? Play the interrogation section of how to play. Okay, I probably will. Well that was <laughs> that sure was something. Uh, wow. <laughs> Nine minutes in already. This is going to be <laughs> quite fucking interesting. Let me. I'm trying to, you know, fix my posture and shit. New year, new <laughs> vertebrae alignment. The human heart is soft like a fist full of fine sand. You say so, Toa, no Mira. Dragon Ball's universe reference. So, you must be very careful with how you handle it. It's very low volume. I might need to tweak that later. I'm very impressed with the overall presentation, I will say. Nitro Chural never. What? What? Not a decision already. Uh, maybe not. Maybe my I just have my thing in the wrong place. I'm not quite sure how to describe it. I never imagined my wish would come true. Zombie, like Sondambi. Baby, wake up. You, you've made me so... Happy. I fell. That was a terrible happy impression. I'm sorry you guys had to <laughs> experience that. Drip. Drip. <laughs> Fuck. Drip. Drip. Wait. <laughs> no. Wish. Oh, is it raining? Rain on me. Like my default rain song. It started to rain. Ame. Oh, it's paint. <laughs> it's like, what on earth is on that shit? Mindlessly, I moved my brush, my brush. The patter of the rain mingling with the faint scratching of paint spreading across the canvas. The sound slowly filled my empty head. It felt like my insides were melting. Melting in the heat of the dark desire I had just harvested. What? Bubba boy. <laughs> Feeling faded away entirely. 
Wait, let me see if I have... Okay, I do have access to the main menu. Is there a... Title, quit, hide text, autoplay, skip text, fast skip, backlog. There's no volume. Okay, I'll just have to manually do it then. I needed to get it out of my system. Like Bow Wow and T-Pain. I needed to capture it on the canvas. The lost canvas. Oh! I wish it was a lost canvas uh, visual novel. Erotic visual novel. I love Saint Seiya the Lost Canvas. I can never talk about it enough. That's stressful. That sounds real realistic. <laughs> おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。おい。お
17. <laughs> Regardless, I must have accidentally taken too many pills when I got home because I slept like a log. It was Taco who prescribed them to me in the first place since I'd always been kind of an insomniac. Insomniacs after dark on the nights and ah! On the nights I didn't take them, I'd either have terrifying nightmares or drift in and out of sleep all, all night long, sometimes until noon. I wanna rock you all. How many had taken? <laughs> Alcohol and pills. <laughs> it's really painting a vivid picture of this man. Nothing new though. And you weren't supposed to take medicine with alcohol in your system. Cause well, I've always felt like shit. Taco keeps telling me to knock it off, but I had no plans to stop. I pinched the cigs between my fingers, drew my sleeve to my nose and took a whiff. It reeked of booze, sweat, booze, smoke and sweat. New Taco wanted me downstairs ASAP, but I needed a shower. Last time I went to work in this state, the elderly patients all gave me dirty looks. Dirty looks at a dirty man. Cigarette in my mouth, I rose my feet stretched, but then I became aware of my empty stomach. The idle realization that my body was hungry, I slid my gaze over the table and floor. What I sought wasn't food, but booze. I seem to remember leaving a half-empty bottle somewhere around here, but couldn't find it. Did Taco move it? If, he pro if so, he probably put it back in the fridge. But to me, getting stuff out of the fridge was too much effort. He reminds me of a friend of mine. <laughs> Not in like the extremes, but in like the, the can't be bothered to do anything. And the alcohol. If you offered me food or alcohol, I'd take the booze without hesitation. Food never interested me much. Cannot relate, I'm the complete opposite. So I'm Mira, he's Toa. With nothing to drink, my only option was to take one last drag, then crush my cig in the ashtray. As I exhaled gray smoke, I trudged into the bathroom and stepped into the shower stall. That was a pointless ass line of dialogue. <laughs> he literally didn't do any of the things he was thinking of doing. I guess it's to paint a picture of the character, but. What a song. Jazz, am I gonna have to deal with jazz in this? I mean, I have more positive feelings towards jazz as someone who's watched Blue Damage. Highly recommend, as y'all know by now, but. Taku Taku. Ray is okay. Matarame, I know, is a problem, so I'm going for him. Fujieda, I could be in too fast. Fujieda, I could also be into, but we have to like take several things off. This is reminding me of Kekai Fenson's opening, which is really funny. <laughs> Slow damage adaptation when? Yeah, this euphoria shit, completely over my head. We are probably going to restart this game about like 12 times. <laughs> or or no, I'll do saves, I'll do saves. I'll be a responsible <laughs> player if it'll let me. What is this palette croquis shit? Click on and find out. Oh. Full name, Murase Takuma. Works as a doctor in Shikomi. Known him for a long time. Caring and kind, smoke color orange. Oh. What is this? Oh, that put it away? We only have Taku, okay. Good to know. That's to put it away, got it. Tokyo, I, oh, this is annoying though, cause I wanna just put my fucking cursor over here, but apparently I can't, so it is what it is. 20XX, 2020X. 2019? <laughs> then 2020 happened! Jesus. <laughs> went to great lengths to host the Olympic Games. Yeah, right. The international sporting event ended in record-breaking failure. Burden, oh my God, not slow damage predicting the future. Burden with massive debt, the nation was plunged into economic insecurity in a roundabout way. Jesus, this is very stressful. <laughs> Poverty rate, which had been slowly growing in the late 2010s, showed no sign of abating. And starting in early 2020s, the gulf between the rich and the poor widened dramatically. 
Young people in particular were especially impoverished and the underemployment rate soared to over 60% for both men and women. Clearly non-binary people were thriving. Even <laughs> full-time job, they knew they would be overworked and underpaid. Thus the suicide rate shot up. Also increasingly exponentially among young people for the first time ever, homelessness and crime rates. Sounds like America. The nation of Japan was visibly heading into decline. This was a major recession on a historic level. The one outlier was Shinkomi. Previously called Tokyo Waterfront City, this was the only part of the country where casinos were legally allowed to operate, of course. As a result, it was reestablished as a special economic zone. The government's infamous casino bill received criticism on all sides, as it should. All, as the start of, at the start of construction, the hired contractor to the Takusato Gumi was suspected of rigging bids for the contract. The bill would only legalize small-scale public casinos. Oh. When the dust settled like a uh, pachinko shit, all that remained was a steel front monument on a vacant lot in a community of prostitutes and vagrants. Then there came a turning point. What on earth? That ain't suspicious at all. Leader of the Takasato Gumi, Takasato Ryujiro, offered to buy the whole thing and take over operations. Everyone assumed it would end in failure, but as it turned out, he received a great deal of funding behind the scenes. In this dark era, people wanted someone to change things, so they clung to the first ray of hope they thought they saw. Played with crumb crushing national debt and dying economy, the government had no other option. A short time later, after an agonizing debate, the Takasato Gumi was given full control of Shinkomi development and operations. None opposed the subsequent amendment to the casino bill, which slashed the public-only requirement. A year later, the city was overflowing with people pursuing liberty and money. Blurred in by the all-encompassing resort facilities, international tourism increased by 60%, and so the Shinkansu became Japan's biggest casino resort. AKA, it's, uh, whatever the fuck that shit was called in Dramatic murder. Office buildings and recreational attractions sprang up one after another, creating a massive entertainment district. Next came the residential and business districts, and after that, Shinkomi became the one bright spot in, amid the devastating depression. Meanwhile, it required a certain amount of aggressive force and control and a world full of unspoken rules. And Shinkomi brought Japan's economy back to life. The Takasato Gumi began to expand their control. And they took over Japan, right? Eventually, when the tacit threats stopped working, the government designated Shinkomi as a special administrative region. It's like Disney World. <laughs> the Takasato Gumi essentially had their own little nation. I missed it. That they could govern as they saw fit. We love sovereign nations. No, the fuck we don't. <laughs> But this slapdash prosperity was never destined to last long. Everything began to climb at a slow, leisurely pace. Duh. Now more than a decade later, in the year 20XX. So 2035. Oh. Ooh, pretty. I'll make that my computer background. A generation born during the decline of the early 21st century were henforce called hapless children. Day in and day out, they travel to the business district either to forget their chronic depression or earn enough money to eat that day. The casino industry was just still thriving, but the bubble had burst. And as Shinkomi started to decay, criminal activity became more common. This all feels planned. Nevertheless, the one with last shred of hope in their hearts, they lingered in this lawless town. This is very pretty, but very depressing, so it doesn't feel as depressing. Dress up your depression with pretty shit. <laughs> then it'll sell! A lot of exposition, it's no use. This just isn't enough. Not anymore. I have no control over this. Chapter Uno. I should probably save at some point, but. Fraise. Or phrase. Well, we're gonna start chap Masturbation in the Shower. Y'all inspired by Catero, or did Catero 
inspired by y'all. What if they clinic stood concealed among the rows of prefab houses? Tiny Clinic first opened seven years ago, privately owned and operated by Murase Takuma himself. We love an entrepreneur, specializing in internal medicine, dermatology, and gastroenterology. Triggered. Um, okay, so he sees celiac patients all the time. Dr. Murase had an upstanding reputation that attracted patients, not just from the local neighborhood, but working from the business district too. Clinic opens somewhat late at 10 a.m. From 1.30 to 4, Taku would take a long lunch, and then after he got back, he'd stay open until 1 a.m. His unusual hours were daily appreciated by night workers who couldn't find time to go to the doctor. Otherwise, I had a part-time job here at his clinic. In exchange for low wages, Taco let me sleep in the apartment upstairs on the top floor of the clinic. Below that, the second floor was home to the secondary medical ward full of hospital cots. Primary medical ward was shown on the first floor next to the exam room. He didn't live here at the clinic. Oh, that's interesting. I never asked for this job or this rented room. It was all his idea. He's so helpful. He wanted me to build character or something. That's why he never fired me no matter how badly I overslept. Because he loves us. Conversely, you could say he didn't put any stock in me whatsoever. I didn't fight it since it would only create more hassle, but I wasn't interested in improvising my life. You got sick of me and threw me out on the street? Then so be it. I felt no fear toward the future. Not because I couldn't picture it, but because I had no real sense of urgency. I knew it would all work out regardless. Maybe I just didn't have anything left to lose. As soon as I walked out of the bathroom, a yawn escaped my whips. I hadn't bothered to dry my hair. Sleepily, I scanned the room with one blurry eye. Oh, there it is, Euphoria. On a whim, I keep wanting to sing Disturbia, but that's not Euphoria. On a whim, my gaze settled on the pocket watch hanging at the easel in the corner of the room. I couldn't remember when or where I got it, but Ray put it on the easel after he found it lying around somewhere in my room. I was here, it's back. I watched it when the self has stopped, but I didn't feel like winding it, so it was basically just there for decoration. I mean, it's pretty. Instead of the non-functioning pocket watch, I looked up at the wall clock. It was just past 11.15. I didn't hurry down to the first floor. Taco was going to come raging up here any minute. Packages. I dressed and left the apartment without bothering to lock it behind me. Then I walked to the elevator. and pr That is going to be a plot device. Nothing in that apartment worth stealing anyway. So you say. The locket's going to go missing. And then we're going to have to find it. And it's going to be like the one motivation he has or some shit. Oh, and anybody can just go upstairs. I rolled the elevator down the first floor, then we'll head to the waiting room. Sitting at the reception desk where I worked was an uptight guy by the name of Arimura Ta Tsukasa. Tsukasa me. Ah, I kind of like Tsukasa. <laughs> He's kind of cute. When he spotted me, he scowled, rose to the seat, and left the desk. The look on his face screamed, you're late. Technically, I was supposed to be covering the reception desk, but Arimura must have come in to cover for me. This happened on occasion, and that occasion happened a lot. <laughs> Nora faded blue suede around Arimura. I called this colorful aura smoke. Apparently only I could see it. Each person had their own unique color to smoke, which shifted depending on their mental state. Most obvious change happened when someone was angry, the color would get muddy. I couldn't see my own smoke, however. No clue when I first started seeing it. From what I could remember, I used to think everyone could see it. Once I found out that wasn't the case, I stopped telling people about it. Was it some kind of superpower? Probably not. More than likely, it was proof that someone, something was wrong with me, like a hallucination. Hence, I generally didn't give it much thought. Yo. Yo. I called out to Arimura in spite of his resting bitch face. <laughs> he was the most reliable nurse Murase Clinic had. Whenever his shift ended, he would go downtown to go drinking at a gay bar. Oh, so he's one of us. Apparently, I, was his, I wasn't his type. <laughs> Oh, I love Sukasa. Oh, that's kind of cute. <laughs> All mail delivered to the clinic was taken in the staff room. Arimura was in charge of sorting it. Sometimes I would buy art supplies or books online, but other than that, I never got any packages. So if I received anything else in the mail, I just assumed it was junk and didn't bother collecting it. <laughs> Arimura was so over us, his eyes narrowed even further, but I ignored him and stepped into the staff room. The seven desk and staff room were divided by a single curtain. I pushed past it and arrived at the reception desk interior. Arimura gave me a dirty look and walked off down the hall. See, the irony here is that Arimura is my type. <laughs> Joe is not mine! But from here on, I would spend the next few hours bored out of my skull. The clinic was quiet, peaceful, and utterly devoid of stimulus. 
or stimulus checks. I called the next patient out to pay their bill, and I set their medical exam card, insurance card, and bill and prescription on the counter. Robotically, I processed the payment, then biting back another yawn, I called for the next patient to proceed to the exam room. Susan! Today my shift ended in the afternoon, so I headed back to my apartment. Lounged lazily on the sofa for a while, then after the clinic closed, I headed back downstairs. No real reason, I was just bored of my apartment. <laughs> my man. He needs a massage. As I sat slumped on a bench in the empty waiting room, Taku walked out from the hallway, his orange smoke hanging over him. His glowing aura. He turned his head from side to side, cracking his neck so loudly I half wondered if he broke something. <laughs> I didn't mean a word of it though, he snorted at me. Mr. Chronic Oversleeper. He pulled out something out of his coat pocket and tossed it at me. Tossed that dick at me! I caught it and looked down, it was a can of coffee. <laughs> oh, he's so hot. That being said, he was still that smile. <laughs> he didn't even do a free drink as a token of his appreciation. He's in love with us, hardcore. Taku bought canned coffee in bulk and kept the staff room fridge stocked at all times for this exact reason. Sometimes when he was feeling up to it, he'd make fresh coffee instead, but for the most part, he looked faster. He looked, took the faster, easier option. Look at him. <laughs> I don't know who this is, but they're interrupting. Right as I cracked open the can, the exam room door opened and a bubbly voice rang out. Oh, it's the second love interest, Ray. Kind of giving Yuki from Idol 7. Used to be Ray, one of the other part timers. His main job was at a bar called Roos, but since they didn't open till 5 p.m., he would often pick up shifts at the clinic to fill the time. Evidently, he wasn't working at Roos tonight since he was still here this late. Two nurses, four part timers, one doctor. Oh, arigato na. You're welcome. Taku looked over at Ray and raised a hand in acknowledgement. It's <laughs> Lying ass. As soon as Ray laid eyes on me, he stormed right over to me. <laughs> oh, I like this dynamic already. Oh. Kind of ship Ray and Arimura. He put his hands on his hips and scolded me like he was my mom. But his smoke was bright yellow, and since it wasn't swaying, I could tell he wasn't really that angry. Born to a Japanese father and an Igrisu mother, he had a well he had a well sculpted face. Because of this, he was wildly popular with our patients, particularly women. Taku leaned back against the reception counter and cracked open his can with a smirk. Believe it or not, he was pretty well liked too. Hiding beneath that stubble and post work fatigue was a manly, rough hewn face! Plus, the patients all praised his warm bedside manner to them. His messy hair and stubble was rugged rather than lazy. Weird how this was somehow never applied to me. Toa, you're the like. I feel ten I, I can feel like I can sense tension between these two. Like a jealousy thing going on over Toa. Okay. We're going to the diner? As I watched their conversation on the sidelines, my gaze drifted to Taku. Hmm? Grimacing, he touched his cheek and sighed. Granted, he always looked tired, but lately it was more noticeable than ever. それ、
友人や知人には簡単に話せないような心の方は専門外だから治療できんが相談があった時はできる限り話を聞くようにはしてる無下にするわけにもいかないしそれで患者さんの心が少しでも軽くなるならいいだろうそうねで悩み相談ってのは前からちょくちょくあったんだがどうも最近そういう患者さんが多くて多い He used to let off some steam. Someone used to take care of him. Ah, s i e a s o m e n e used to take care of him. So, they seem to remember something he stopped short and looked away. So, they seem to remember something he stopped short and looked away. So, they seem to remember something he stopped short and looked away. So, they seem to remember something he stopped short and looked away. So, they seem to remember s o m e t h i n あれってそういうことだったんだできることならメンタルケアもしてやりたいとは思うんだがそうもいかないからな、うん、ただ感情が高ぶってる状態の患者をないがしろにするわけにもいかんだろう This is very open to chase、ね、最近診察時間がやけに長い患者さんがいるなぁとは思ってたけどどう対応したらいいものかってずっと考えてるんだな Robbie gave back to his head, h a k a l e t t e r the third sigh of the night. But really, was it, any, was it any wonder that more and more of his patients were starting to have mental health problems? I sense a conspiracy. This shady ass city. Over the past decade, Japan's younger generation have been plunged into extreme poverty. A few years ago, you'd see people on TV yelling about the 20 and 30 age <laughs> millennials' inability to save money or find a stable career, but it was even worse. These days, you saw women curled up in their underwear on the sidewalk while men started fights and mug strangers. Young teenagers would dress in slutty clothes to work the corners. TikTok! <laughs> Compared to 10 years ago, there w a s a lot more murder cases, and many of them were either unsolved or dropped. Cops are useless too. They couldn't keep up with the growing number of criminals. But of course, there's here under the Tsukato Gumi's thumb, the Shinkomi police force was basically just there for decoration. Gig economy had become commonplace, so jobs were scarce, cost of living was high. They could help people die, and people knock on them where they had no choice but to keep living. The nation of Japan was seeing privatization on a level that a few decades ago was never even outside, seen, never seen outside dystopian fiction. Had a disproportionately large number of hospitals, possibly in correlation to the crime levels. Naturally, there were plenty of unlicensed and back alley doctors to be found here. So they have a large number of hospitals that are still back alley. Whatever. Probably because healthcare don't cover it. <laughs> Or the doctors just fucking suck. Relatable, unfortunately. These days, hospitals probably had to serve as battered women's shelters on top of everything else. Doctors were ready to help people, and people here needed help, not just with their bodies, but with their minds, too. Taco and Ray both turned to look at me. その言い方俺はスカンだ。Ooh, the judge. 別に間違ってない。<笑> I'm just telling it like it is. Toa listens to the Joe Rogan podcast. I felt it standing up on the floor and rose to my feet. どこ行くの散歩。えぇ、ー、ちょっと !Oh. Toa is pissy because he pissed Taku off. But I ignored Ray's frustrated retort, walked to the front door, and left the building. Exhaling white fog into the cold air, I reached out of the back pocket of my pants, pulled out my cigs. I'd forgotten to grab a coat, but I was too lazy to go back and get one, so I figured I'd be fine. This is exactly like a friend of mine. <laughs> but, like, in an extreme way. As I walked down the dirty sidewalk, I put a cigarette between my lips and lit it. If anything, it had only just begun. Let me turn this down for a second so I can grasp what I'm looking at. Okay, it's. <laughs> Up top. Like usually, I stumbled across around town on a whim looking for a one night stand. Not because I was specifically lonely or sought another human's warmth or anything like that. Okay, s u m d e r e I felt no love, no passion, no desire. <laughs> Yamanashi, Ochinashi, Iminashi. All of my emotions had rusted over. Sex was just the only way I could feel anything at all. Sex ain't never felt better. I wanna swim in it all night. Well, not the only way. The other way was through violence, fist fights. But what I wanted was an all out brawl enough to kill me. <laughs> well, shit, and I knew there were very few people in this world capable of that. 
Most people I fought had held back, even just subconsciously, afraid to hurt me beyond a certain threshold. Thus, there was no point in looking for someone special. Generally speaking, I felt very little in the way of standard human emotions. No idea where it started, but I probably wasn't born like this. You could have been. You could just be a sociopath. Sometimes I got irritated when people nagged me too much, but for the most part, I held it in. Other people seemed to see me as an unfeeling monster. <laughs> but in the rare moments that I was overcome with powerful impulses when I was raped or beaten, that was when I truly felt joy. Then was it rape? <laughs> Too scared to enact violence directly. There were plenty in this town that loved to hurt people on the inside. So yeah, I had a lot of hookups. If you asked me if I liked sex, I would say yes. But I wasn't interested in learning about the person attached to the dick, nor did I feel like telling them about me. I just wanted them to use me like a fuck toy, then throw me away. <laughs> Relatable! That was the compromise I was willing to make. <clears throat> Toa, a man of the people. <laughs> What is this video game music? I didn't work at the clinic, so I slept till noon. Unfortunately relatable. I keep trying to fix my sleep schedule. It is not happening. I awoke lying on the back of my sofa, sat up, lit a cigarette, and took a drag. In the end, I never found a hookup last night. Instead, I picked a random bar, had some drinks, and went home. All in all, it was a pretty tame night, considering the previous night where I drank until I blacked out. Because then I felt lackluster. Toa is so extreme. In, like, literally always. I took my time to enjoy my cigarette, gazing at the TV that had been left on all night. Blue light. Then suddenly a news chiron flashed up on screen. Takasato Gumi leader Takasato Ryuji 81 dead of heart failure. Oh god, everything's about to go to shit, isn't it? My eye was locked in the white text. The leader of the Tsugato Gumi was dead. But then the surprise faded. That was probably like Toa's dad or some shit. For the record, I had been informed that this man was my biological father! Who <laughs> called it! My mother was his mistress. In other words, I was his illegitimate son. So, t so Toa is probably what the, the, the heir that said I had next to no memory of being around him. Frankly, I could only vaguely remember what he looked like. So I didn't have much of an emotional response to the news of his passing. Just sort of, oh, he died. I looked away from the TV and leaned back against the sofa. So Toa has to inherit the entire city. Just then I heard a muffled buzzing noise and realized the cell phone on the far edge of the sofa was ringing. Sakaki picked it up and looked at the screen. Sakaki was calling. I could also see a series of notifs that indicated notice that had indicated he'd been calling for a while you probably wanted to talk about my father and if so i wasn't interested I dropped the phone back to the sofa without answering it cigarette dangling from my lips i stared up at the ceiling i had no real plans for today maybe i'd wander around downtown With that thought i took a long deep drag <sighs> exhaling smoke i crushed my cigarette in the ashtray That little dinky-ass TV. Then I rose to my feet and pulled on my coat. Now then, where to? Granted, I don't even have a TV, but... Pardon the interruption. What is this, ESPN? We will now briefly explain the exploration segments. Please bear with us. Jesus, this fucking game. <laughs> when an objective pops on the screen, you know it's time for exploration. This time, the objective is to go somewhere. During exploration, you're free to prowl the city of Shinkomi. Go to places, talk to people, learn about the city. When you arrive at the correct destination, exploration will conclude and the story will progress. Or you can explore the city first before you continue. You'll, you're free to play however you see fit. In this case, the objective is go somewhere, so let's move this party somewhere else. Do I... Move. If you wanna, if you wanna, if you wanna, move, move. Third floor of Motosei Clinic, aka the place where, oop, where I sleep. It's as messy as a storage closet because it practically is one. The clinic, wide variety of local patients, young and old, plus night shift workers, residential area, a vast swath of high-rise condo buildings, the circling District E. The majority of Shinkomi residents live in this one of these pencil towers. Main Street, occupying the center of District E. Here you'll find convenience stores, drug stores, diners, and places to buy various other sundries. Well, we've been to the clinic. Residential area is a place, and the shopping street, I feel like, is where the action is, so. Because it's like, our, our, our dad just died, so someone from the gang is probably just out looking for us, and we're probably going to accidentally come across them, or whatever, probably the Sakaki guy. Taco started up seven years ago. We already were here. For a small private run clinic, it has a good reputation that draws the patients not only from the neighborhood, but the downtown area as well. I don't know. Do we already get this? 
Shinkomi has a lot of hospitals. Most of them are either single rooms or large scale facilities. We already know all of this. Just then, I sensed someone's gaze and looked over. I thought I saw someone, something slip into the shadows of a building. Or is my mind playing tricks on me? <laughs> it's fucking, um... Oh. It's, um... Otomo <laughs> from Awashi. If you encounter someone during exploration, try talking to them. Talking to them may give you inspiration. Let's try it out. Oh. Toa, right? Crap! <laughs> what should I do is right. When you select talk, the hourglass and jagged line will appear. This is a simplified version of interrogation where you'll respond with negative or positive answers. For a restaurant, check the... Yeah, sure. On the right-hand edge of the screen, you can see it says Euphoria Up. Unlike real interrogation segments, exploration chats show the results of negative and positive answers in advance. It will raise the Euphoria gauge. Lower the Euphoria gauge. So what should I do? Some targets don't care which way you respond. Gaining inspiration is never guaranteed, so feel free to explore every inch of the city. Let's try it out. Sure. Positive. Positive. Uh. Uh. So what if I am? <laughs> right, and the reason I know is because he knows, right? He who? I'm gonna surpass him, he he he, or my name isn't Inara. Ooh. There's no inspiration to be gained this time around. Some exploration segments offer it while others don't. You'll be able to tell the difference based on the objective. Sure. Red text means it's a special segment where no inspiration is available. Blue text means inspiration is out there just waiting to be found. It's blue text most often, red text is less common. But because this is a tutorial, it counts as a special exploration and concludes, sure. Can I, though? Uh, did I already pick a location? Bye, Otomo. Tell Aoi I said hi. For the most part, residents of District E pass through here to do their shopping. With it, all the diners, convenience stores, discount stores, and the drug stores packed in like sardines, it's easy to find what you need. Daddies! <laughs> She's always busy, not as packed as District D. Everywhere you look, there's people working or people getting wasted. It's different districts based on letters, as opposed to numbers, like in um, The Hunger Games. The traffic light changed and the crowd started walking, but just then I spotted a familiar face out of the corner of my eye. It was Ray. Ara. Ray's wearing fur, so he's canceled. <laughs> what are you doing here? Yeah. I just wandering you. On my way back from Tajima's. <laughs> she gave me a bunch of stuff, so I thought I'd share some with Taku. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Thank you for helping her. Uh, let's talk. Oh, yeah. Taku Taku. Reminds me, I left a croquette in the fridge for you. Did you eat it? Is, is this good or is this bad? <laughs> I can never tell. Positive. Positive. Uh. A little. Eh? For real? Just a bite. Yeah. That's a big step for you. I added condensed milk when I was making them. It's supposed to improve the consistency. Condensed milk and croquets. <laughs> Sounds crazy, but it works. You tasted it yourself, right? Mm. Well, yeah. Next time I think I might try rice croquets. <laughs> anyway, I'm heading back to the clinic. Is it croquet or croquette? <laughs> All right. Move, if you wanna, if you wanna. The gameplay of this is so over my fucking bald ass head. <laughs> I like, can't even comprehend it. And I thought Camp Buddy was a lot. Fuck my life. This is District E's residential area. If you live in Shikomi, chances are high your apartment is in District E. Skyscrapers, like a skyscraper! An attempt to make the most living space out of its critically limited land area. And now we're just smoking in it. Toa, your lungs are literally made of tar at this point. <laughs> Strong in the area. Majority of these buildings aren't up to code, so you get hit with a major earthquake, they'll probably collapse. Foreshadowing. But the residents would just each choose to live here anyway. 
Someone that concerned with safety wouldn't dare live in Shikomi in the first place. Valid point. Uh, I don't know who we talking to, but this is just E's residential area. Oh, well, I guess there's nothing here. Um, probably back to Mochise Clinic. So the Clinny Clin. Nobody here either. Where do we just go? I mean, we saw everything, but. I returned to my apartment. When I left, the TV was on, but now the familiar static drone was gone. I said I could hear a faint rustling sound. Intruder. Oh, oh. Oh. Ooh, a welcome intruder. There's a stranger oh. in my house. Took a while to figure out. Put it off for too long, the whole place turned into a pigsty. Absolutely, I want to talk. Come and talk no. to me. I wanna come on your face. Seeing as you're here, why don't you help me out a bit? Absolutely. Positive. Positive. <laughs> it's so funny every time. Sure thing. It's not often you actually do as you're told. We can be obedient sometimes. Sometimes I feel like it. Hey. <laughs> He's so <laughs> fun. Yes. Now it's a bit cleaner. Here's your reward. Your tongue down my throat. Pulled a pack of green gum. Mint flavored, apparently. Got it from a patient, but since you still smoke, you're probably needed more than I do, yeah? Betsy. Betsy. <laughs> Fucking Kagami's voice. <laughs> it's so funny. Don't be like that. Just take it. Take it, Toa. You pressed it into my hand and I re reluctantly accepted it. <sighs> of course, I give it about a week before you turn this place into a mess again. If you could make it every two weeks instead, I'd appreciate it. So <laughs> Bye. All right. I want to talk again. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> Guess can't. Well, this is pointless. We gotta go back here. Oh, Tajima's was mentioned. Maybe I should have gone there. No. Back. I don't know if that was a glitch or... Yeah, I guess we end in the quest. Who the fuck is Tajima? Is that one of the love interests? No, it's Mura something. Not Mura Sakibara, but that would be funny if it was. One corner of the residential neighborhood sat a little old shop forgotten by time. It was a snack store called Tajima's, run for many years by a little old octogenarian lady. What the fuck does that mean? In most cases, oh, like eighth generation? Ex I don't fucking know. The expanding casino industry forced evictions on older homes and stores. Tajima's fought eviction every step of the way, and now it was the last of its kind in the area. Fortunately, Tajima was popular with middle-aged folks looking for a nostalgic taste of their youth, plus it attracted younger people curious about traditional snacks. Every now and then I'd stop by and grab some. I wasn't a big fan of junk food or anything, but for some reason the shop felt like home. I walked up, stood at the door, and peered inside. Crammed interior was packed to the gills with sweets and snacks of every kind. Hidden among them was a white-haired, stony-faced woman standing as still as a statue. You know, shit. <laughs> There's always some old woman. Wasn't there an old woman in, um... Oh, yeah, the, the mother in fucking, uh, Dramatic Murder. Shouted irritable. Reluctantly, I stepped inside. But no, though she may have looked angry, she was always like that. Hanging on the wall, but the clutter was a painting with a layer of brick over it. I kept wondering about it every time I came by. It was one of the one thing that didn't feel homey like the rest of the store. Maybe the owner just likes spooky stuff. <laughs> she nodded to me as I stood there without browsing. Her smoke was smoke was a deep dark brown. Not once had I ever seen it waver. Grabbed some stuff at random and bought it to the counter. <laughs> Obasan, we are already there. <laughs> to herself as she pecked away on her antique cash register. Solon was one of few people who had lived here since before Shinkomi became a casino resort and she knew what it used to be like. She would always blather on and on regardless of whether anyone was listening, but some people found value in her stories of the old days. <laughs> Oh, 
いいの<笑>男も女もアバズレで溢れかえってるよ。I do. She's living in paradise. そうしなんだよ。分かってんのかい<笑> She's seen him <笑> on the move. <笑> He said, yeah. I'm not an absolutely truth be told. I liked her. Whoa, that's an emotion. I feel like she was the only person who's still living in the old times while the whole world changed around her. Because she was an outsider here. あ。She's probably like upset that like her daughter was a mistress or something, but still is kind of looking out for him or something. I waved and turned and set off down the street. Oop. And we're back here. 2.30 a.m. Taku, Ray, and I paid a visit to the local diner. Taku had promised to buy Ray a parfait, and tonight it was time for him to pony up. <laughs> That's it, the three of us usually ended up at this diner anyway, since it was still open when the clinic closed. I was downtown at the time, so they invited me over to Pone. To Pone. Table, Taku ordered the Salisbury steak special. Ray got the steak fried rice and a parfait, and I got a coffee. Damn Toa. <laughs> Hit the food, I slowly sip my drink. This is pretty commonplace for me, and yet every time it happened, like clockwork, Ray would tell me how it's not healthy and it's going to kill you one of these days. Sure enough, I could hear him grumbling about something, but the moment they put his parfait down on the table, his whole face lit up. Mm -hmm. I'm liking Ray a lot more than I thought I would. He squeezed his eyes shut and squealed in delight. Taku sipped his post dinner coffee with a wry grin. Rai grin. He wasn't a big fan of sugar stuff, so he couldn't really relate. Maido, maido, yorokobu kara, motto taksan oishi sweets tsukutte te kanji. Ray stirred his parfait with his spoon, a dreamy smile on his face. It's only last night I put a cigarette between my lips and started to light it. Jotto, mada tabete run desu kedo. For real. Un ja nai wa yo. Kitsuen seki daro, koko. Mana atte mono ga aru de sho? Taku だってもうやめたんだし、あんたもいい加減やめなさいよね。Oh, Taku quit. That makes me even more. タバコは百貫やって一理なしだぞ。Taku in his casual wear. I'm gonna take it off. I ignored the complaints, lit my cigarette, and took a drag. Oop, just spit a little bit. <laughs> Gross. Instantly, Ray smoke went from yellow to red, mingling with the cigarette smoke. 本当にもう、トアは酒とタバコばっかり。あんなにいい絵を描くのに実体なんてこんなものよね。ドラゴン・レイ。レイ・ラウン・エグザジュー・サイ・サーキング・ヒプリス・エルボン・テーブル・エンス・チン・エス・ハンド。レイ・ラウン・エグザジュー・サイ・サーキング・ヒプリス・エルボン・テーブル・エンス・チン・エス・ハンド。レイ・ラウン・エグザジュー・サイ・サーキング・ヒプリス・エルボン・テーブル・エンス・チン・エス・ハンド。レイ・ラウン・エグザジュー・サイ・サーキング・ヒプリス・エルボン・テーブル・エンス・チン・エス・ハンド。レイ・ラウン・エグザジュー・サイ・サーキング・ヒプリス・エルボン・テーブル・エンス・チン・エス・ハンド。レイ・ラウン・エグザジュー・めとはに関してはもう諦めろ。昔からこういうやつだ。It was the harsh truth. その割にはかわいい趣味があるのよね。<笑>趣味<笑>部屋にずっと置いてあるウサギのぬいぐるみを<笑>興味ないとか言うくせに捨てないじゃない実は好きなんでしょ。Oh. いいよ。So he's also a noise fan. I did have a bunny plushie in my apartment, but I wasn't particularly attached to it. And why is it still there? I just randomly spotted it at a store one time and I wanted to buy it, so I did. I hadn't really touched it or thought about it since, and now it sat collecting dust in the corner. Aww, dust the little quen. No, Taku, that's what you're for. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Haha, Ray! Saka teased me, Ray joined in. Ignoring their idiocy, I turned away and looked, took another slow drag of my cigarette, because I'm too moody. I can't be bothered. So, you're. 今日はデスマッチには行かないのか
今日はお休みチームメンバーの都合もあるからね Oh, he's a fighter Makes me a little bit stronger Makes me work a little bit harder Makes me that much wiser Smart to make me a fighter As a result, the whole district was torn apart. Oh, I totally missed that. Um, backlog. Special town located District A at the center. It was once a ground zero for a lot of Takasato Gumi infighting. As a result, the whole district was torn apart and residents were barred entry. Oops. Naturally, this attracted a lot of seedy types to lay their seed. Eventually, it became known as a place for fist fights, and people started using it as a battlefield to test their strength. Nowadays, anyone who wanted to fight could meet up a district A to take part in what was now referred to as the death match. Of course, the Takasato Gumi had noticed this, but they chose not to interfere. Here in Shinkomi, plenty of people were frustrated with the tyranny of the Takasato Gumi, not to mention the struggles of living in poverty. Takasato would let them have the death match in district A if it meant they could vent their stress. Just shut them up. Their one restriction, they would hassle anyone who tried to live there or start a business there. Other than that, the Takasato Gumi didn't get involved. That's interesting. Guess we know where the secret shit's being held. Believe it or not, this reminded me of Under the Green Light. Where's all the drugs being held at the Deathmatch Arena? Believe it or not, taking part in deathmatches was something of a hobby for Ray. He always went with his buddies from Roost. Supposedly, they were actually among the top contenders, but deathmatches weren't my thing, so I didn't know if that was true. I don't know why they're not your thing. You literally like being punched in the fucking face. Judging from their looks... You wouldn't think they were seasoned fighters, except for the rare occasions they turned up sporting cuts and bruises. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's got nah, ears yeah. to the streets. But, I really like Ray's character design, actually. Well, I think it's a お前たちも気をつけろよ。上の連中はともかく、チンピラどもがトラブルを起こすかもしれん。そうなったら、拳で鎮圧しちゃうから大丈夫。To prove his point, Ray flashed up his fist, Taku grinned wryly. 拳を振るのはデスマッチだけにしとけよ。Taku and Ray have better, <laughs> have better dynamic than either of them, but so uh... ありがとう。大満足。Polish off his parfait, he sat down his spoon with a satisfied smile. 